Hi there. It's Sue, and thanks for joining me for Tips and Talk Day. These are bite sized topics that I pull from community questions and things that I'm observing in the world of handmade small business. If you'd like to submit a topic, DM me over on Instagram at giftbizunwrapped. Before we get into the show today, I want to make sure that you know about the newest thing happening over here. It's called the Gift Biz Bash, a Zoom party that turns into a podcast episode several weeks later. The party consists of a short training with Q&A from yours truly, and then an opportunity for you to give a shout out about your business. You can tell us about a promotion you currently have going on, or share a collaboration that you're considering so that you can find a perfect partner for the event. A little bit of learning and visibility for your business? What could be better? There is a catch, though. Spots are limited to keep the party to about 45 minutes or so. That means you should grab your spot right away. It's totally free. To make sure you're included, why not do that right now? Pause this episode. Go to giftbizunwrapped.com forward slash bash to sign up. And then come back and listen to the show. I'll see you at the bash. No feels terrible. Let's face it, it's a rejection. And who likes to be rejected? Most likely, your reaction to the word no is to shut down. You feel defeated with whatever possibilities the no shut out. And to protect yourself. You give up on the person who made you feel bad and you move on to other people or activities. To escape in a way, so you can recover, soothe the wound, if you will. Unfortunately, life is full of no's, some being more harsh than others. And if you think about it, you'll see that you give out your fair share of no's as well. They can range from just looking as your response to a questioning boutique owner, to no thank you, please take me off your list, to an annoying telemarketer. You might say to your friend, I'd rather not go for Italian tonight. Let's do Mexican instead. But when a no comes your way in a sales situation, where you're hopeful that someone is going to buy a product that you've made, it feels very personal. What if I told you there's a way to use this no to your advantage? Today, I want to talk through how to settle down your emotions so responses to selling your products don't feel like such a roller coaster. And then what to do in these situations that actually could turn a permanent no into a future yes. The first thing I want you to do when someone says no to buying your product is to resist the urge to fight it. Answering questions, dealing with objections, or presenting new ideas for use of your product is one thing. But trying to explain why a person is wrong for not wanting to buy right now is another. Reacting in this manner enforces the definition of sleazy selling. Aggressively trying to get the sale at any cost will guarantee you never will. That person won't ever come back to your booth or website if you've minimized their right to decide for themselves. It's also a sign that you weren't listening to them or respect their final decision. Here is what to do instead. When a prospective buyer says no, confirm that you recognize what they've said, that they aren't buying today. In doing this, you've created neutral territory. Now, you're two people talking together versus being in a buyer-seller relationship. Doing so may allow you to have further conversation that could pave the way for a future sale. Ask their opinion about flavors or scents for your upcoming line. Get their ideas on the sizes that you offer or whether they think you should... Fill in the blank here for whatever applies to your business. Getting them to talk could provide great insight for you around your product and could generate ideas for the future. You may also hear new descriptive words that you could use in social content or on your website. 
These types of conversations can provide such great information. Also, when faced with a no, find a way to stay in touch with this person. One of the biggest mistakes craft show exhibitors make is to lose out on this opportunity. If you don't take this step, that person is lost to you forever. The easiest way to do this is to get their email. Do a raffle at your booth to win free product, or ask if it's okay to put them on your special notification list. This will give them first access to new products and promotions. Avoid asking them to be on your email list because this rarely works. Most people know what's coming next. Sales, emails. Calling your list anything other than an email list is best. Something that makes people feel special and that they're getting something extra by being part of your prioritized group. Some business owners go as far as to name the list something special that aligns with their business, making it really feel like a special, important, and customized group. No matter how you do this, collecting emails is the second best to getting the sale. Oh, and of course, you're also getting your customer's email when they make a purchase too, right? This also often gets lost at craft shows. When you have these emails, you can stay in touch with them for the future. This is how you grow your business. Repeat sales. Which leads to my final point about what to do when you hear no. Remind yourself that your potential customers are just like you. They may or may not be in the market for what you're selling at that exact minute. But when it's time to buy a gift for a friend or they run out of their current candle supply, then may be the right time for them to buy. That's why ongoing communication is so important. You'll be in their path when the time is right. People who have purchased from you before can easily purchase again, and those who didn't buy yet but recall the friendly interaction they experienced with you will become ready at some point. When you get the system in place, you'll have a continual flow of people at all levels of the buying cycle. Some are just now beginning to get to know you and your business. Some have made their first purchase with you and are ready to buy again. And some who are loyal fans and continue to buy and spread the word about your business. Each show that you go to builds upon the other as it applies to your list and growth of potential customers. But this only happens when you know what to do after you hear the word no. Here are the four steps again. Number one, don't fight it, accept the no. Two, acknowledge their decision, and if possible, continue the conversation to start a relationship and also get some learning for your business. Number three, Invite them to enter a giveaway or join your priority list and explain the added benefits that they get by doing so. And finally, recognize that no may mean not now, but it doesn't mean the same for the future. No is a word that doesn't need to be negative. Play off this word in the way I just described to bump up your sales over time. No's can and will turn into yeses. That's a wrap. I'm a get to the point kind of girl, and this is what you can expect from these quick midweek sessions. Now it's your turn. Go out and fulfill that dream of yours. Share your handmade products with us. We want them, and they bring us both so much happiness.